Hey, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad or the iPad filmmaking. Because today I will actually answer also a short question about Final Cut Pro. Every Friday I answer your questions about DaVinci Resolve. Today it's a very short one because I have five questions, but they're pretty easy and simple to answer. Most of them I actually did already as videos. This is kind of funny because, you know, sometimes we read something. This is what, I'm, what I think. We read something and then we forget about it. And then maybe later we think our subconscious takes something else, but you will see what I mean in a second. So first question, how to apply a power grade in Resolve for the iPad. So this question I remember and I made the video because I realized it wasn't on my channel. So just two days ago, I think I made a video how you can actually do power grades. For everyone who is watching right now, so what is it actually? Color grading in DaVinci. So you've finished your color grade. What if you wanna save it as a preset and not just as a LUT? Because when you do a LUT, then yes, you can use it in any software, which is cool. But if you want to have the ability to change all of the settings with all of the notes, can can you save that in a preset? And yes, and that is called power grade. And in the video that I made two days ago, I show you how you can save that. So you can open a different project or a new project and you can apply different color grades. So I use this, for example, with my iPhone footage because my iPhone footage always comes as HDR and I have to do always the same things, color transform space, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm talking about. So next one, since voiceover doesn't really work in DaVinci Resolve, can you show how to do, to do them in Final Cut Pro for the iPad thing? That's the funny thing. Five days ago. I probably read it because of course I hearted it, but <laughs> I forgot about this question completely. And when I made this week's video about Final Cut Pro, the reason why I made this, so like I, w I wanted to record a video that would come out next week about Final Cut Pro, but then I realized I had to do a voiceover and it, I, I couldn't figure out how to do a voiceover. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is some so basic. So many people need that, you know, that uh, yeah, then I made the video about the voiceover. So basically I'm answering this question in the video from yesterday or the day before as well. So yeah, I'm sorry for that, that I'm not saying or telling that here, but this video is also for that I show you where you can find it. Does it make sense? Yes, I think so. Next question, bro, I have the iPad M2. When I start editing DaVinci Resolve quite suddenly and removes everything. So I guess you're talking about a crash. So yes, the iPad version isn't that stable than the PC or the Mac version. From time to time it crashes. For example, my version always crashes, not always, but many times it crashes. So I start using the edit page, which is one of the pages that you can open with the shortcuts, right? Um, so when I open in the edit page, many times when I zoom out and in too fast and I make cuts too fast, then it suddenly just crashes. At the beginning, I had this more often when I worked, for example, on the masterclass for DaVinci Resolve, but somehow it is kind of funny how our brain sometimes adopts. So sometimes when I already know when I'm doing this now too fast, I just slow down one one click. I, I basically zoom out and then I wait a second before I click with my pencil because it's always when I click with my pencil, then suddenly the program, not always, always, but I can't even tell you what exactly is. I couldn't make a video about it showing you that it crashes. So basically to answer your question, DaVinci Resolve still has an amazing feature, which is called the automatic saving. So it should save everything from the second when it crashes. So sometimes I, I lose maybe half, an, half a minute or so, but also on top of that, I religiously do I have a keyboard, I do Command S for saving my project. But to be fair, when I compare that to Premiere Pro, when Premiere Pro was crashing and then I totally forgot to save, I could probably sometimes lose like 15 minutes, 20 minutes and never lost more than a minute in DaVinci Resolve, right? So you said you, you kind of like removes everything. It could also be that you're just talking about the pages. You know, when we open all of those pages that are still hidden at the moment because they are officially not launched. Yes, if you restart DaVinci Resolve, you don't have them. And I read about this a lot that people complain about this, but my answer to that is, come on guys, if you have the shortcut, you can just open it. But I guess it's a pain because you don't have a keyboard. Then I get it, it's a pain in the ass. But at the other side is these pages are not officially launched. So it's a workaround and they could have easily turned this off for us but they kept this because I think they also wanna see how we adopt to those pages and how we use them. And, and sometimes maybe issues come out and troubleshooting because we can use this. But of course, no company wants to put out a product that is not completely finished. That's why we officially only have the color tab and the cut page. Next one, how do you get the deliver button? <laughs> on the, yeah, so this is the button, the pages that I'm just talking about, right? And I still get from time to time comments because I mean, I make now videos over six months now. I'm, I'm approaching 180 days, 180 videos, like 
in two languages. So it's actually 360 videos. So I'm approaching half a year making videos about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. And of course, people discover DaVinci on the iPad now, and then they don't know that, right? M many of us who follow this journey along, um, we know that we have all of those pages. So go to my channel, here on my channel, you will find a video, how to unlock all of the pages in DaVinci Resolve. And it's not a hack, you just go into the shortcuts menu and you give a shortcut to those pages. And then if you click the shortcut, you have the page. It's that simple. Next one, the last question. Hi, are you using paid version? So DaVinci Resolve comes in the free and in the paid version. To answer the question, yes, I have the studio version because I come from Adobe. I used Adobe for the last couple of years. And if you calculate how much money the subscription is, 60 bucks a month. Okay, at least the first couple of years I had a student um, discount. Uh, but if you pay the 60 bucks a month, a month, that's so much money. And then the 120 euros, what it was here in Germany, it's it's a no-brainer. And the reason why is because there's a couple of features that you have in a studio version that for me just makes the price. It's like the voice isolation. Like many times, like now, I'm just recording with my iPhone and the small and the small microphone. I'm not taking out my big microphone. Yeah. And this is also the travel lifestyle, you know? Many times I'm, I have this perfectionism and I don't wanna make a video, but then I realize, man, my whole channel is about being lightweight and just doing things fast. And for example, the voice isolation. I have a tutorial video here on the channel how you can use the voice isolation. I could be on the beach where you have like noise in the background, the water and cars driving by. And I could just with just one slider, click, done. Da Vinci is doing all the work. This feature alone makes it worth to use the uh, studio version or features like magic mask I'm not i'm not going into it too much but basically by just scrubbing over your subject it recognizes your subject moves along it's like tracking in the color page and you can do all kinds of adjustments to that it's amazing all of those ai features basically the stuff that is neural engine that can that you will get access when you have um, the studio version but if you're a beginner and you're now wondering, should I buy the Studio Vision? I mean, I make it very simple. I even say that in my masterclass. DaVinci Resolve in a free version has like 95% of the features are free. So if you do the basic stuff in DaVinci, you don't need a Studio Version. And when you discover a feature that you would like to use and you think this is worth, then you just upgrade because it's a one-time fee and then you have it for the rest of the life. And I think, I don't know when it will come, but because we have DaVinci Resolve on the iPad with all of the pages, Blackmagic already announced that, that they want to bring the full version to the iPad. Problem or the thing that is limiting the software at the moment is not even DaVinci itself. It's the iPad environment, the iOS environment. It's limited in many ways. That's also the reason why Final Cut didn't came over just one-on-one -on -one because it's, <laughs> it's a hard job to do something when you don't have all of those libraries that you have on the on the big version. I say the big version like Mac and Windows. So, but they will find workarounds. They will find improvements. The iOS will get more updates. And so it, ongoing through the next years, we will have more and more features available in the iPad version. And so I see the studio upgrade as a one-time fee and just supporting the, the developers along the ride, making this version the best version on for filmmakers on the iPad that there is. So now it's nine minutes. I wanted to make a short version of this Q&A Friday, but this is the one day where we just have a communica uh, communication. Com communication. It's early. I'm drinking a coffee. <laughs> I'm going now to the seminar. I wish you an amazing weekend. See you soon. I'm Daniel. Bye.